Color is very important to laser shows. One of the key advantages of lasers is the pure, intense colors they produce. So when you make a laser show, you want to be sure you're getting the brightest, most accurate colors possible. Because laser projectors are all so different, Laser Show Designer has advanced color controls. You can set up color palettes that are unique for each of your projectors. Whether you have a full color or single color projector, LD's color palettes give you the best and brightest possible images. For example, LD color palettes know the difference between graphics and beams. You'll automatically get the most power when using beam frames and the most accurate colors when using graphic frames. You might think it would be difficult to set up such advanced color palettes. Fortunately, the color palette setup wizards in LD are very helpful. First, let's talk about color palettes. Then we'll go through the setup procedure. When you draw on the LD computer screen, use all the colors you want. For example, even if you only have a single color red projector, you should draw a mountain scene with white snow, brown slopes, green trees, and a blue lake. On your single color projector, it may be in shades of red, but on a color projector, you'll see the full color scene exactly how you drew it. Color palettes accomplish this magic. A color palette tries to do the best job possible in converting the colors on your Laser Show Designer computer screen into the colors that your laser can show. The information is stored in a color palette file. You can have as many different color palette files as you need. If you change projectors, just load in a file you previously created for this projector. If you've never used the projector before, go ahead and create a new color palette file for it. Laser Show Designer color palettes are very powerful. However, for them to work properly, your color hardware has to be correctly wired and properly operating. Throughout this tutorial, if you find strange results or the color system does not seem to be working, check your equipment. You can find more information including Pangolin's recommended wiring connections in the Laser Show Designer help file. We'll click on Help, Help Files, the LD2000. Look in the QM2000 board section for more information on the QuadMod2000 board and on connections and wiring. Okay. Let's assume that your laser projector is correctly wired and properly operating. It's now time to set up a color palette, especially for your projector, to get the best possible colors out of it. To begin, let's start the Laser Show Designer 2000 program. Laser Show Designer is now initializing the QuadMod 2000 for our session. Incidentally, one of the things which happens during the initialization is that a default color palette is loaded. After we finish making a palette for our projector during this tutorial, we will save it as the default so that this one will be used the next time LD loads. To start the palette setup wizard, click on the settings menu item and then select palette. This brings up the introduction to color palettes window, which provides you with some useful information about how color palettes are used in LD2000. The first paragraph tells you that color palettes are used to map or translate the colors that you see on the computer screen in order to give you the best possible representation on your particular type of laser equipment. The second paragraph tells you that within a single color palette, you can have different color balance settings for three different types of frames. For example, TV type raster frames use the most accurate, fully balanced colors, while beam frames need high power first, with color accuracy being less important. The third paragraph tells you that you have your, a choice of how to set up the palette. You can set it up automatically using the automated palette setup wizard, or you can do it manually using the palette setup dialog box. Since you'll be using the palette setup wizard, select the first option, it's already selected, and click next to continue. The next dialog comes up asking where you want the test pattern. Most users want scanner one, projection zone one, and can just hit next again. However, in case you're using projection zones, or you have multiple QM2000 boards, let's take a moment to look at this dialog. LD starts the setup with Scanner 1. Most clients use only one QM2000 board connected to a single set of scanners. The Color Palette Wizard will therefore set up a single colored palette which you can optimize for this scanner set. Said another way, what you're about to set up will control the projector attached to your first QM2000 board. 
If you do have two, three, or more QM2000 boards installed in your computers, the wizard will later come back to Scanner 2, Scanner 3, and so on. This will let you set up a color palette for each of your projectors. For this tutorial, we will be setting up just one QM2000 board. The output of this board goes to what LD calls Scanner 1. In other words, your laser projector. Within Scanner 1, you can have up to 20 different projection zones. For example, if your scanner can hit both a graphic screen and mirrors placed around the screen, you might set projection zone 1 so it's only as big as the graphic screen and set projection zone 2 wider so it can also hit the mirrors. The color palette wizard needs to know which projection zone to use so it can show you some color test patterns. Most people will leave this choice set to zone 1, the main graphic zone. Color test patterns will then appear wherever your main graphics appear. Okay, after setting the scanner and projection zone, the next wizard screen asks what type of projector you have. There are three choices available. Your first choice is single color projector with fast blanking device. This is for projectors using a single color laser and a single acousto-optic modulator or internal modulation for the intensity and or blanking. Your second choice is multicolor projector with fast color control device. Most modern color projectors use this type of system, multicolor laser with a single or multiple acousto-optic modulators. Your third choice is multicolor projector with slow color control device. This is for projectors using slower mechanical actuators for color control. These actuators are sometimes called color flags. This choice can also include scanner blanking. For this tutorial, we will be using a multicolor projector with fast color control device. The second option is selected, so we'll click Next to continue. The next six screens will set up the six Laser Show Designer color channels. Unlike most computer equipment, which have three colors, red, green, and blue, LD can control up to six separate laser colors. This lets you take advantage of the fact that many lasers produce more than three separate color lines. For example, a laser might have one red wavelength, two greens, and three blues. In this first screen, you see color channel 1. The dialog tells you that a colored circle is now being projected. It asks you to select the button on the screen that is closest to the color circle being projected by the laser. If we go ahead and click different buttons, you actually won't see any change at the laser. What LD needs to know is, what color do you see? We see red, so we'll click this red button. Now we'll click on Next and go to color channel 2. It's showing us a green circle, so we'll click on a green button, which is actually already selected here, and click on Next. For color channel 3, it needs to know what color. We see a deep blue. Click on Next. Color channel 4, we actually see nothing. There's nothing selected. Black is used if you don't see any circle, or it's very faint. It means that your projector's colors are not affected by this particular channel. That's certainly the case here, color channel 4, so We'll click on Next. Same thing for color channel 5 on this laser and for color channel 6. So now we've finished our first set of color buttons. Now for most color projectors, you should have at least three or four working color channels. If you didn't see any projected circles, or if they're all faint, then something is not set right on your projector's color system. First, double check that you selected the proper type of projector on the Number of Color Channels wizard page. Then, check your projector configuration and wiring. You want to be sure that your projector can be controlled by the voltages put out on the QM2000's pins. For more information, look in the Pangolin help file under the QM2000 board section and look for the topic Connections and Pinouts. Okay, at this point, LD knows what colors are controlled by each of LD's six color channels. Next, we'll set up the fading linearity for each active color channel. This just means that LD knows how to smoothly fade the color up and down. For this tutorial, our color channel 1 controls red, so we see four red lines being projected. Each of these lines are at different intensities. First, adjust the top slider so it's being displayed at its maximum brightness. So I move it to the left, it dims out. So I move it to the right, it gets brighter. And it is brightest at the right, which is where it should be. Now, using the other sliders, adjust each of the other lines to be the same intensity as the top line. 
It's a little dim. Perhaps right about there. For the third slider, that's a little dim, roughly there. And the fourth slider, approximately there. So now, once all the lines are at the same intensity, click on Next. We'll repeat this process for each active color channel. Second line. Third line. And fourth line. Notice that our blues are a lot fainter than our greens. That's because this particular laser has a lot of green power and not as much in the blue. That appears approximately equal. Now remember, in this particular projector, we only had three colors available to us, the red, green, and blue. And LD is smart enough to know that we don't have to adjust the other three color channels. We just adjust the ones that have settings for it. Now we're at the color balance screen. This is the first of four screens used to adjust the balance between the various color channels. This is necessary because your laser may appear brighter with some colors than with others, as this one does. It's brighter in green. The best way to do this is we're going to try to mix the colors together to get a nice neutral white color. Right now the laser is projecting a line that is supposed to be white. On the left side of the screen, we see the six color channels, one through six. Next to each one is a dot showing what color that channel controls. In our projector here, color channel one controls red, color channel two controls green, three controls blue, four, five, and six control nothing. For this projector, there's a lot of green, but not as much red and blue. So we're going to turn the green slider down. That's the second slider. If we turn it down too much, it becomes a mixture of red and blue or violet. So we're looking for a roughly even color balance. Right now that looks good. We've got a good color balance for this. We'll click the next button and do the same thing. Try to get this to be a nice even white that matches the first white. Roughly there. I could also change the blue, but I don't think that will help. Or take down the red. That becomes too blue. We'll click the third line. And finally the fourth. Again, we're trying to get this to look as white as possible. When all four lines have been set this way, so that they're visually equal in color and in brightness, then we're ready for the final steps. I actually see that these last two are not equal in brightness, so I'll go back two steps and pull everything down a bit. And for purposes of the tutorial, we'll call that even. When we click Next, LD will take less than a minute to do all the calculations necessary to make a color palette. You can see down at the bottom that it's training three different palettes. A fully balanced palette has the most subtle color renditions. It's used for the very accurate colors needed to make photorealistic raster pictures. The high saturation palette is best for normal laser graphics. It gives very bright colors. And the high power palette is used for beams. It uses as much of each color as possible, sacrificing some color balance and accuracy in favor of very visible beams. When automatic training is finished, the final color palette wizard screen comes up. It has two choices, to either save the palette permanently or just to use it temporarily. In the first choice, you save your palette to the hard drive as a file. It's also automatically saved as the default, so that this palette will be used the next time you start Laser Show Designer or Showtime. If you want to save all your hard work, definitely select this first choice. Enter a file name for the palette, such as Pangolin Projector 1. You don't need to set a path or file extension. These will be automatically added. Just enter the name you want. The second choice is to not save your palette. Instead, just use it temporarily until you exit LD in Showtime, then it's gone. 
For this tutorial, we'll save it using Pangolin Projector 1 as the name. To finish, click on Finish to complete the wizard. When the Palette Setup Wizard is complete, it will exit, and we'll be back at the Laser Show Designer 2000 program window. Our palette is now ready to be used each time we start Laser Show Designer 2000.